Hey golfers, Eric Barseski here, day 13. Today we're gonna do some alternatives, variations on pitching, mostly to hit flop shots, higher lofted shots, okay? We see when golfers need to hit higher lofted shots, especially when they think they wanna hit a higher lofted shot, what they'll do is they'll abandon some of the things they learned on day seven, I believe it was, about pitching, and they'll let their weight fall back here or they'll throw their hands at it to try to add loft or they'll do some other things. And what you don't need to do is those things. So today we're gonna to learn how to hit a higher lofted shot with kind of the same pitching technique but a slightly different setup, okay? The first option, if you need to hit a higher lofted shot is if you have it, choose a club with higher loft, okay? Oftentimes that's overlooked. You know, if you have a 56 degree sand wedge that you love around the greens, that can be great and you can open it up to 58 degrees or something like that, but if you're trying to hit a shot that with effectively a 62 degree club or a 63 or four degree club, just choose your lob wedge that has more loft and go with that first. Learn to use the other clubs for higher lofted shots and then still set up square and, and kind of hit that shot. Uh, the second option though is, especially if you are hitting a 60 and you need more loft than that, is a slight alteration to setup and everything else is gonna stay about the same. So. The same setup applies mostly. Normally, if you remember, quickly review, we set up with the handle pretty vertical, we grip down, our feet were close together, and our weight favored that front leg. Something like that, and then we'd make a little pitch from there, okay? We'd hinge the club under the plane slightly, let it fall as we pivoted, okay? That's gonna be the same, okay? I'm gonna have Natalie come in. She's gonna hit and demonstrate just a simple little standard pitch shot. So the shaft's vertical, she's gripping down, her feet are close together. I'm gonna try to stay out of the way. Good, okay, standard little pitch shot, okay? Now, for a higher lofted shot, I'm gonna kinda grab the club here, and I'm gonna set the club with more loft. It's still facing that direction. I'm gonna set the club with a little bit more loft. What you'll notice is the handle is placed back this way. If we quickly go back to a normal shot, go ahead and set up to a normal shot, what you'll notice is this club is pointing at the kind of the center of her near her belly button, honestly. And I want her to do the same thing now. The grip is round, so I want her to point this club at the center of kind of her belly button. And what you'll notice, and then not move the handle. I don't want her to then put the handle back up where it was. I want her to just leave it there like that. And now, her feet are aligned slightly this way. I'll get out of the way of this camera. Okay, you see her feet are slightly open, but the ball position is still in the middle of her stance. Okay, and she's gonna leave the handle pointing at her rib cage, or her belly button, sorry and she's gonna make the same motion now, okay? And that ball's gonna go a little bit higher, okay? If we want a little bit more extreme, we're still not getting to the ridiculous stuff, All right? We're gonna set it up there, okay? Go ahead and set up to that handle. Her feet are gonna be a little bit more open. Her weight is still on that front foot. Same pitching motion. Good, cut that a little thin, but it still went, came off higher and nice, okay? One more of that same setup. Go ahead and do it yourself. She sets the club down just with her one hand so she doesn't move the handle. Then she sets up to that handle. Good, okay. Good, okay. I'm gonna step in here for the extreme ones, okay. So most of your practice, I want you to do that. It's the same technique. You wanna generate a little bit more speed because it's more of a glancing blow because you're really letting that face open and back, okay. Uh, but this setup is otherwise the same once you realize that the grip is round and you're just setting up to the handle, whether the handle is here like that or whether the handle is like that and I'm hitting it that way, right? The, the grip is round, so I'm just setting up to that grip and pointing it kind of at the same place on my body. So do that for most of your practice. Five minutes or so of that today. For the last two minutes, I want you to have a little fun by going kind of extreme. I want you to see if you can flop a ball up in the air and catch it. I'm not gonna do it because I'd probably step in this uh, pile and that would be an outtake for the ages, but I'll show you how to set up for that. There are some slight setup variations for this shot that you almost never need on the golf course, but it's fun to do. So the setup variations are, you're gonna see, because the handle gets very low. So if I lay this club basically flat on the ground, okay? You can see the handle's pretty low. It's pointed well back here. So I can't really, it's tough to set up like this with my feet close together. So I'll let my feet get wider because the grip of the club is down in here. Okay, you can see that. I'm still keeping my weight on that front leg. I wanna be careful not to get back here or else I'm gonna bottom out way behind that ball. Okay, so 
sitting up to the handle, still pointing at the middle of my body. My hands are almost between my knees. This club face feels like it's almost pointing backward at this point, okay? It's the same pitching technique. You can also go under the ball sometimes and not move it, but we'll see how this works. Like that. Part of that is the club is, the, the ball is going across the face like this. So if you get it just out on the toe, you can barely graze it. So again, this is why the shot is not used on the golf course very often. And if your ball's sitting up in rough, it's very easy to go under it entirely. But there, stand up to the handle, weight forward. Okay, so if I was more spry, I could have reached out and caught that one. I can do it a little bit less extreme, get it to go higher and a little further out and take a couple steps and catch the ball. Go ahead and give that a try for two minutes if it's safe, if you don't have like a pile of balls in front of you or a pothole or, or anything like that. Um, we actually have a challenge on the sand trap where people try to catch the ball. A number of people have done it, so it's not too hard, but it's really impressive if you can catch it and then without moving, grab it there. I've seen that done before. That's nice. So that's day 13. We'll see you again tomorrow.